Hi, welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be painting this little carving of a chef. Come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. So here's the carving we worked on last video. I've done a little bit to him. I've cut in some folds in his apron and uh, a couple little details. Now there's a lot of different ways you can finish this carving. You can use boiled linseed oil or a stain or multiple things, but we're going to paint this. So I'm going to start off with a titanium white. Uh, a really, really good thing to use when you're using this, and I actually ran out uh, is flow medium. Flow medium is, is wonderful. It helps the paint flow off of the brush more evenly. Um, you can see I'm kind of struggling to get this paint onto the carving. Um, flow medium really, really helps. So just a few drops in the pile of paint that you're working on on your palette. A couple of drops in your clear rinse. So you can have a dirty water rinse where you clean the majority of paint off in your rinse off jar and clean rinse. Put a couple of drops of flow medium in there and it'll help clean the brush. It cleans it more easily. It's almost like a, a lubrication for the brush. Now you can see I'm picking up water to mix with the paint from the clear rinse jar that I have just right behind me there and uh, it, you'll get a lot pure color rather than dipping it into uh, the dirty rinse jar which is uh, already browns and, and uh, different colors into it. Alright so I've decided to make the pants gray. Now with character carving, I will use black. Um, if I'm doing wildlife, I will use a combination of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. But uh, for characters, um, not as critical. Depending on the type of black that you use, you'll get different types of gray. Um, this is ivory black. And you can see the gray that's there. If you were to use uh, Payne's gray, you would have a more bluish gray. So experiment with the paints that you have and, uh, and see what different kind of values you can get out of them. Okay, we have some burnt umber. Let's do the shoes in burnt umber. And important thing with the soft body paints is you see how this is dried up here. You'll have the same with gesso. Uh, you want to make sure that all that junk, all that dried paint is off before you make a pile of paint to use because you'll have these little chunks of dried up paint. If it dries into your painting of your character, um, it, it's just not fun. So make sure that those ends are cleaned up really good before you pour out your paint. Here I'm just transferring some water over to my palette. Uh, this paint is starting to dry out a little bit. You can see how it came out of the uh, container. It came out uh, on the dry side. So we'll wet it down and paint in some shoes. Now, like I said before, there are very many different ways of painting and painting styles. Um, this is pretty much the, the way that I've always handled it, and it's come from a, uh, a 
combination of the different types of carvings and paintings that I've done in the past. And with practice, you'll develop your own style. All right, here we have titanium white, black, red, and raw sienna. So we're going to go for another skin tone here. We're going to thin out the raw sienna and white together. Do yourself a favor when you're making the skin tone with these two colors. Have a pile of white and add the raw sienna to it, you'll get to your color a lot quicker. Now it has just a hint too much yellow into it and just a little bit of red will help. Be careful with the red because you don't make them uh, you know, really pink. So I have on the darker tones of the flesh color here, and now I'm adding the lighter tones. You can see how that chin really pop, pop off when, when uh, I add the lighter tones. It really defines it. And then I'll go in with a medium tone, leaving the darker lines inside. Uh, because of faces, if you just paint it one tone, a flesh tone, it, it uh, comes off looking flat. So you want to add different tones. Maybe rose up the cheeks a little bit. Make sure the lips are, are uh, a different color than the face, because they are. Now here I'm just adding just a little pop of color on the collar, uh, some sort of a, let's say, emblem or a insignia, a logo. Um, the chefs that I've seen have a little something there, uh, so it helps add a little bit of interest. Here I have cerulean blue, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to make some shadows in, in some areas that, that need a little bit of shadow. And the way to shadow, lightly shadow, the color white is with a blue. One of the colors you can use anyways. So I'll go in some of these areas not too heavy, kind of with a dry brush effect. And just hit some areas. It's just one way of doing it. And you can see once I start to get some of these blues in to um, define the areas of separation. Like, well, here I got a little blue on the a gray pants so I just wet it down rub it with the brush uh, and you can pretty much thin it out here I'm going in with a wet brush here and fading it out so it looks more like a shadow and I'm gonna create a definition here between the apron and the shirt And this is just one way of doing it. And I'm going to show you another way in just a minute.
Here I'm kind of touching up the uh, one of the eyes a little bit. I put a little bit too much uh, blue on there, making his pupil a little too big. So I'll reduce that We're using the white. Put him on a hair dryer, dry him out really good. Bring him back and I'll use a Sharpie to put the pupil in. Now you could use black paint and a toothpick, which I've done before. Uh, the Sharpie is much more precise, and easier to do, and works just as well. All right, we'll go in with some white and put the reflection of the eyeballs, the light against the eyeballs. Now, the important thing to do is place that reflection in the same spot on both eyes. If you do not, uh, it just won't look right. So it has to be on the same spot on both eyes. Here goes some eyebrows. Nice dark eyebrows there. And here's where I put some uh, blue to define the shirt that's more underneath the other, where the, it folds over the other part of the shirt. And this is what it looks like. Remember, what this guy looks like, because he's going to change pretty drastically here in just a minute. Just different styles. And now I'm going to show you a, another style other than this. You could stop here, or you can move on to antiquing. And that's right, we're going to use antiquing on him. And this is a, a leap of faith after getting this guy already painted to do that. Oh, here we go. Now I know that this on the end grain, especially on the top of the hat, is going to soak in this stuff. And I'll have to go back and retouch him up with some white. It, with a like a dry brush technique. Just to hit the top most outer uh, facets of the hat so it can, it can show some depth with the dark areas but uh, you don't want the whole thing to be dark you want it to uh, show your highlights too and your highlights should be a nice bright white The important thing is to keep this whole process wet. You don't want this drying on there or it'll look just like that. It won't, uh, you won't get the antiquing effect. So I'm wiping it off now. And it, you can see it really changed that white color uh, pretty dark. So I dip the t-shirt rag into the clearer water and give them a little scrub and you can see it, it's starting to come off. It's starting to uh, not be so dark. So I'll continue with them and now hitting the utmost outer parts with a dry brush technique of white, the white titanium. And he's starting to look a little better. Here we go. And as he dries, you'll see uh, his face especially will lighten up a bit. And this is one spot right where all those stop cuts are to make the hat. They really soaked up uh, the antiquing, so I'm gonna whiten that back up. That's pretty important. Um, that's the band of the chef's hat. 
that creates the separation between the hat and the head. And here we go. This is what he looks like with an antique stain put on him and wiped off. I highlighted some of the whites again. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.